Hello world. Hey, I wanted to talk about the expat life for women. <laughs> I'm seeing these companies pop up about how you can uh, pay them a lot of money to go and set yourself up in countries that cost a lot less than it does to live in the United States. And I'm here to tell you, I just read one, <clears throat> you don't have to do that. I mean, great. Glad those people are making money. But I want to tell you the real truth. You can do it yourself. So I just read this one. Uh, I won't mention any names. About setting you up in an apartment, gym membership, all this other crap in Prague for $1,400 a month. I don't even spend $1,400 a month in the United States for housing and the gym membership I don't have. Um, but there's certainly 24-hour fitness. You don't have to pay that much. Um, anyway, I've got my strategies. But what I want to talk to you about is the fact that those are overpriced and you can do it yourself. And I'm going to give you the tips on how to do that, women. Um, when I started traveling 10, 11 years ago, there weren't many solo women travelers. Um, and now there's a lot more. So the world is waking up to the fact that women can travel alone and work at the same time, which is what, what I've done. Um, some people don't call what I do work, <laughs> but my work is my play, people. Um, and I recommend that. Um, everything's okay, George. So, <clears throat> okay, I think we're safe. He's keeping me safe. Um, let's see. So first thing is, uh, doing your research. Like right now I'm researching cheapest places to live in Europe. So far what's come up is, uh, Czech, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Sardinia came up. I've been to Sardinia. Sardinia is, uh, us Westerners would call it, but they don't. And it's cheaper than you think. Anyway, uh, if you can get spaghetti that's homemade for five bucks a pop at dinner time, I'd say that was a good price. So, um, hey, you can get your Social Security from anywhere in the world and uh, live on it. Well, it depends on how much you're getting. But anyway, let's go country by country. Um, Southeast Asia, easy. You can go there yourself. And... I would, I'd add Europe, you can go by yourself to it as well, because even if you know just one or two people there, you're going to be able to figure out how to break down the barriers of whatever it takes to get a bank account and do your own research. And I mean, it's, I think it's fun to do research. I was just researching living in Portugal because I want to live somewhere, um, cool and, uh, friendly near the water so I can go swimming. I do miss that here in Palo Alto. So uh, my advice to you is to start doing the research. If you don't want to do any and you just want to pop right into a country and have it all set up, yeah, do those things, but it's going to cost you. So questions below. Uh, I'm happy to help you on YouTube. I get to my uh, people that I work with um, consulting in my uh, paid projects first. So when I get a chance, I can answer on YouTube. Um, so the people that tell me it can't be done, it can be done. So why not? I know so many women doing it and they all have different stories. It's really interesting. Um, some people aren't working. Uh, most people aren't working, but I like to work. I love what I do. I don't see me not doing it ever. Um, so, um, that's another thing you got to research. Can you do your work in that country? A lot of people can do remote work with writing and, um, I've even gotten photography gigs and I've done a lot of humanitarian work and it's so cheap to live in these places that it costs hardly nothing. Um, or I get room and board in the place that I'm leading the project, uh, like I did in Argentina lived in a home for neglected and abandoned people, adults, and that was amazing. And did photography and writing for them, and they uh, gave me a room and fed me. And that just came up as I was traveling in Buenos Aires. So don't ever say that you can't do it, because we have a lot of privileges living in a Western country, 
and it's not that hard to get around, especially if you're not set on leaving at a certain time, you can get a much cheaper airfare. So check it out, comment below. Um, you can change your life. You just have to give it some research, some enthusiasm, and keep telling yourself that you can do it. I just was listening to Louise Hay last night. She passed away last year, and what a bright light and a treasure. Um, she's an incredible woman, and she did it on her own, and she had a horrible childhood. Um, and, you know, I didn't have a horrible childhood. I did have a comfortable childhood and, you know, for the most part, happy and uh, had good parents. So I don't know what it's like to be abused in the way that a lot of people have been abused, but I do know that going forward and really changing your life is going to take guts, not so much money, um, and deciding that you really want to do it and research and being open to it. Not, I mean, a lot of people come up with excuses and reasons. Some of them valid, but most of them aren't. It's an excuse for fear or um, something that they've just decided they're not going to get over and you know it's the same thing with like uh being in a partnership it's like if it doesn't work for both sides it doesn't work but if you force it to work that doesn't work it has to be mutual um and it's the same thing with anything you decide in life if you come up with a lot of reasons why you can't do something then you're going to believe it um so i don't recommend doing that that's what people do to me. And that's how, what they're not doing it to me so much as to themselves. Um, if I had said, oh, I can't travel by myself, I wouldn't have gone to 33 countries by myself. If I had said, oh, I can't go by myself alone um, or I can't try this thing, then I wouldn't have done it. So it, you're not any different than me. Um, and I, I like to tell people, hey, don't think of yourself as special. I don't. Just do it. Just do it. So I'll see you in the next video. Comment below. Happy to help you.